I'll be holding our seats. Um, let me greet the Church of God um, wherever you are watching from. Uh, may God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Uh, I really say it from the bottom of my heart. Why would they continue with the praise and worship? It was so refreshing. It was so powerful. Amen. Uh, I'm here to share with uh, the brethren the good news. And I hope uh, we are going to take from this service something that is going to be beneficial to us, beneficial to our families, beneficial to our endeavors in life. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. Um, I have a very interesting um, topic that I want us to actually touch on, and I hope um, this is going to stay for a long time in our lives to actually assist us navigate in this journey of Christianity. Amen. Amen. Um, we want to learn from the book of Genesis chapter 24 uh, is a story that I think a lot of us are familiar with. It's the story of um, Abraham helping his son to get a wife. His son's name was Isaac. And um, I would um, want someone to read for me, if someone can assist me to read um, I have a short Bible here. I want an English version. From uh, Genesis chapter 24, verses 1 and 2. And then verses 14 to 20. And lastly, verse 61. Can I read? Yes. Genesis chapter 24. Let me start verse 1. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham with all things. Verse number two. So Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who ruled over all that he had, please put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. 14 to 20. Let's go to verse 14. Verse 14 says, Now let it, let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink, and she says, drink, and I'll also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed your servant, Isaac. You have appointed for your servant, Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. And it happened before he had finished speaking, that behold, Rachel, Rebecca, who was born to, to Bethel, son of Milka, the wife of Noah, Abraham's brother, came out with a pitcher on a shoulder. Now the young woman was very beautiful, and behold, a virgin no man had known her. And she went down to the well, filled the pitcher, and came up, and the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me drink a little water from your pitcher. Amen. Um, can you, can you continue um, to verse 25? So she said, drink my Lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down to her hand and gave her a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the trough, ran back to the wall to draw water and drew from all for all the camels, and the men, wondering at her, remained silent, so as to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. So it was, when the camels had finished drinking, that the men took a golden nose ring, weighing half a shekel, 
and two bracelets for her wrist, weighing ten shekels of gold, and she and said, Whose daughter are you? Tell me, please, is there room in your father's house for us to lodge? So when she said to him, I am the daughter of Bethel, Milka's son, whom she bore to know. Moreover, she said to him, We have both straw and feed enough and a room to lodge. Verse 20, no, verse 61. Verse 61. Verse 61 says, Then Rebecca and her maids arose, and they rode on the camels and followed the men. So the servant took Rebecca and departed. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you for the good reading of the word of God. Can we pray? Father, we thank you for the word. May your word be living waters in our lives. May it transform us. May it change us. May it take us to where we're supposed to be. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. I think we all know the story of Isaac. But we may not have gone deeper into understanding what actually transpired and how we must learn from the story. Amen. Amen. So you would find that Abraham um, discovered that he was growing old and he wanted his son to have a wife. And therefore he did send his servant to go find a wife for the son. And the servant did just that. Um, so he went with ten camels and other servants that accompanied him. And um, he had to go and find a deserving wife. Yeah. Yeah. Not only a wife, but a deserving wife, a good wife. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why he wanted God's confirmation <laughs> that whoever that he was going to find was the right wife. But then for the wife, to be the deserving one, she needed to do something special. Yeah. Amen. You don't just get married out of nothing. No, no. You have to do something. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's nothing that comes free in life. Mm -hmm. Everything that you have, you have worked for. Yeah. It's only that at times it comes like it's natural. Mm -hmm. When you are used to, to, to think so much, that you don't see the value of what you are doing to get them. But I can assure you that everything that you have in life, you have to work for it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, even if you don't do anything, just get to the blanket and sleep. When you wake up, you will be even smelling bad. Just by sleeping, you will eat something. Hallelujah. So what basically I'm trying to say is that, depending on what you want to get, you have to do something in life. And, um, when the servant came to the well, he says, God, I'm going to ask for water to drink from the girls that are going to visit this world today. Yeah. And not only am I going to ask for water, but I will also expect yeah. that lady to go a step further yeah. and say, I will even do the other part. Because giving him water was going to be very easy. Yeah. We don't drink much water as people. Yeah. One cup, two cups, you're okay. So if someone would have fetched the water, and someone asked for water, it was going to be very easy to fulfill the request. But the moment the person would then say, I will also give water to your cameras, then it was going to be a nice make that person. Yeah. Because the camel does not drink like a person. Yeah. It drinks a lot of water. Sure. And now there were ten camels. <laughs> ten of them. Yeah. And you would have not been asked to feed those camels or to give them water. But it was going to be the choice yeah. of this lady. The servant was just going to ask for water to drink himself. But then the lad was supposed to go a step further and say, I will also give you camels, ten of them. So that kind of a prayer that made before God, it was a very difficult condition that he had set aside so that whoever was going to meet that condition, 
he was going to grab the wife of Isaac. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So the, before he even finished talking to himself in his heart, Rebecca arrived. Yeah. And the Bible says she was very beautiful. When she arrived, she went straight to the well. She drew her own water. She wanted to go back home. Maybe she was even late for whatever reason why she never entered anyone in the world. She was on her way home and the servant ran to her and asked for water to drink. And the Bible says she immediately gave him the water. After he drank, she even offered that I'm going to feed. I'm going to also give water to all these couples. Hallelujah. Just as he had prayed, that difficult thing. Then the servant, then the, the, the lady, she actually did that. And when she did that, he was not even convinced at the first time. It didn't give him the conviction that she's the right lady. Hallelujah. Yeah. He watched her silently. Yeah. And after some time, when she had done with all those cameras, he then asked her about her parents and where she was coming from. Mm -hmm. Then she confirmed that she was a relative of Abraham. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. And then he knew. He then asked if there were if there was accommodation in the house for him and the people that accompanied him and the camels. And the lady immediately responded positively and said, we even have dry grass for the camels. Mm. We also have the rooms for you to sleep. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And the rest of the story you know. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then we go to verse 61. Mm. That again said, enter uh, Rebecca and here help us. They rode on the camels to take them to the husband. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to share with you lessons. I'm going to inspire you. I'm going to challenge you from this story. And the first point I'm going to make to you is that God does not just give you something for nothing. What he gave you for nothing is the chance for you to become a child of God. Because he died for you before you did anything. When you were so bad and evil, doing bad things, there was nothing good on us and about us. But he chose to die for us. And that came for free. Amen. You can't boast about it. You can't actually go and say, I made a wise decision because I was so clever. It was God's gift that came to us. But when we then come to God, we need to wait for our salvation. Amen. And it is. The salvation that God has given us will not just come and stick on us without doing anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I will take Isaac as Jesus Christ. The ones who are preaching Jesus here. We are not talking stories. We are not sharing stories. We are talking about Jesus in this church. Amen. I will take Isaac as Jesus. Because Isaac wanted a wife. And the wife of Isaac or the wife of Jesus is the church. It's me and you. We are the wife of Christ. Amen. Now as a result, Christ chose us. Yeah. Christ chose us without us doing much. Amen. But when he has now chosen us, we need to work for the relationship. For us to stay in this relationship, we need to work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And who helps us to stay in this relationship is the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we are nothing. We can't do anything much. Hallelujah. Because even great people in the Bible, people like Peter, he was even warned by Christ that you are going to deny me. Three times, says, never, I will never deny you. Amen. The Bible said, but you are going to deny me. Mm -hmm. 
Because he did not have the Holy Spirit. Amen. And when time came, a small child came to him and said, even this one was walking with Jesus. But he rejected Jesus. Even after being warned. Why? Because he was in his physical body. He was in his physical flesh. The Holy Spirit was not in him. Because at the time when Jesus was amongst them, he would pray for them and the Holy Spirit would come upon them. Like what happened during that time, the 12 of them, when he sent them out, the Bible says he prayed for them and the Holy Spirit was upon them. And they went out and preached and healed the sick and performed miracles. And they were even surprised that they could perform miracles at the time. Why? Because the Holy Ghost was not staying within them. Yeah. But the moment the Holy Ghost was upon them, they would go out, they preach, they healed the sick, they did all the miracles. Why? Because a Christian is a Christian with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. We don't need to starve the Holy Ghost. We don't, not, we don't need to make him angry. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. What do you do with your body? What do you do with your life? What do you do with your time? It determines whether the Holy Ghost is in the people life or not. Amen. This one fed all the camels, knowing very well that for me to achieve in this world, I need my form of transport to the husband. We need our form of transport to Jesus. We need to access Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for being She had the revelation to discover that I could suffer now, but the rewards that I'm going to get in my life cannot be compared with the suffering that I'm here for. Feeding those couples was just for two hours, but the end that was changed forever. You know, as Christians, we've got an opportunity. We've got a chance to change and turn around our lives. Because Jesus is able. With Him, all things are possible. With Him, all things are possible. But He never is troubling you now. We are able to turn around. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is a good God. The Holy Ghost is able to carry us to our husband. He is able to give us access. What he only needs is for us to feed him. Yes. The Bible says in the Old Testament, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, Let not this book depart away from your mouth. Yes. Meditate upon it day and night. Yes. So that you may be prosperous yes. in all your ways. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. This word of God is prayed. In one of the verses, Jesus said to his disciples, those who eat my flesh and drink of my blood, and people did not understand what he meant. But the Bible says, him who wants to follow me must carry his cross every day. The life of Christianity is not on Sunday. It's not when you go for a function. But it is our lifestyle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible does not make it impossible for us to be Christians. Because it doesn't say that we are angels. But it even says, if you say you don't have sins, you are liars. Amen. It has a prescription on how to live. It tells us how to live every day. And in there, when even you go, you sin against God. It tells you that if you confess your sins, He is just to forgive you. And to, to cleanse you out of all righteousness. He is a God who has not put limitations in your life. Amen. It just depends if you take account of your time. Do you even realize how you spend your time on a daily basis? I just want to leave this with you. To say those cardinals that she fed became a transport to the husband. If we feed the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Ghost. By which you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Amen. Even unto the day when you are going to face judgment, he is going to witness for you. Do not believe him. Live for him. Live with him. Amen. Carry him around. Amen. Go to work, go with him. Go to the mall, go with him. Amen. Go to wherever you are going, go with him. Just remember that he is your partner. Amen. He says, You are my temple. You carry me around. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I will just leave this word with you today in saying, please feed the Holy Ghost. Go with him wherever you go. And God will bless us. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen.